Hi everybody, Shelly here. So join me while I paint my very first self-portrait from life with the help of a mirror. The first thing I'm going to do is figure out where I'm placing my head, which in real life happens to be the size of my hand. So from the top index finger to the bottom of my thumb. I'm going to be working on the 12 by 16 oil primed canvas board. I've already coated it in this uh, transparent oxide red oil paint. It's dry to the touch and here we go. I'm going to be using the Apelles palette, which is only four colors. Titanium white by Sennelier, yellow brown, Old Holland, Chinese vermilion, Sennelier, and Mars black, Old Holland. It is brand specific. What I've done is mix up three, I'm sorry, four values of flesh color. Just sort of simple, neutral flesh colors, nothing too saturated one way or the other. And now I'm looking in the mirror and using the paintbrush to find the tilt of the head. I'm not going to be looking straight on at myself in the mirror. I want to have a little bit of interest to the pose and have a bit of a tilt. And I'm looking for sort of a little bit of an attitude. So. Here we go with that. And I'm wearing the hat so that hopefully I don't have to put too much emphasis on my eyes because I wear glasses and I'm gonna try to paint the portrait without the glasses. So I think the hat's gonna help with that. Now I'm finding the angle of the eyes on a horizontal plane and I'm going to be making sure that they um, tilt along with the tilt of the head. So we have the eyes going in this sort of downward tilt to the right, which also means that the nose and the mouth have to follow that same orientation. I'm going to be using my hand a lot just to kind of plot out my features pretty loose. I mean, I expect that I'll have to move them around as I continue, but I think it's going to work. Uh, you could also use a proportion tool or the end of a paintbrush, whatever, uh, you find easier to work with. Also, I'm working directly on my canvas with oil paint. You could also do a preliminary type drawing using vine charcoal if you feel more comfortable starting without paint initially. So I have the tilt of the head, the position of the eyes. Now I have the eyebrows down. Let's find the bottom of the nose and then I can place the center line for the mouth. I like working on a toned canvas, especially for portraits. Uh, typically I go for this sort of um, reddish orange color, which this was from Transparent Oxide Red. But you could also do other colors such as a um, medium value green or maybe some sort of neutral gray. That would work well also. So you'll notice all of my features, eyes, nose, and mouth are all following that same tilt. I also have a soft box single light source to the upper left side of my canvas, but also I have a window to the right side of me. So I'm going to have a cool light coming in from the window and it looks like warm light is coming from the soft box light. Every artist should try a self portrait. I mean, it goes all the way back to Titian. Uh, you see it with Velasquez and of course, Rembrandt, <laughs> he's done several, and then we have Courbet, and also Bouguereau, and of course, John Singer Sargent. So you're going to be in really good company doing your self-portrait from life. It is highly recommended that if you are any type of figurative or portrait artist and you haven't done it, you should definitely give it a try. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will be inspired to do so. I'm looking to capture the right edge of my face and I'm just kind of thinking about shapes, nothing with uh, detail, no detail in the eyes, I'm looking for shadow shapes, edges um, to outline the face with because if I get the width of the face down that would be good. I'm not going to be going into any significant detail, just big shapes, probably pushing more into the shadow shapes initially. but. I definitely will uh, consider putting in some lights too because the tone canvas can stand for my mid value. 
That way I just can concentrate on adding the darker shapes and then some of the lighter shapes. I found it helpful to get the right edge of my face established. That way when I move back into position into in looking at the mirror, I can line up my face so that it creates the same amount of distance from the center of the face to the edge of the face. I'm using that sort of as my anchor to getting in and out of the same position so that I know how to proceed because you're going to need to take breaks. You can't just continuously stare at yourself in the mirror the whole time and your your eyes, you know, you're you're going to be moving around a bit so every now and then you need to have some part of your face on the canvas kind of solid and that you can judge what you see in the mirror to that part of it on the canvas and make sure that everything's still lining up when you've gotten back into position from being away from the mirror so since i wear glasses it's uh it, right now we're doing big shapes so I don't really need the glasses just so I'm not looking at detail but once I start getting into more detail I'm gonna have to be putting my glasses on figuring out what I'm looking at and painting that detail but when it comes to painting my eyes in detail um, hopefully that the bill of my hat is gonna create the shadow across my eyes so I won't have to have a lot of detail. I really am trying to keep the eyes in shadow. Remember the Courbet uh, self-portrait? I think when I do this again, which I will, I'm going to use that as my inspiration. I'm going to pick a more frontal uh, position to do my self-portrait with from the mirror next time. It's always a good idea to look back at master painters like Courbet and Titian, Velasquez, Rembrandt, of course. You know, if painting self-portraits was a way that they were able to learn and become the amazing, excellent, masterful painters that they became, uh, then I believe it's something that we should all be doing as well. What I'm doing right now pretty much is, is basically sketching with paint. So I have a fairly large paintbrush for the size of the canvas that I'm using. It's like a number four. Uh, the bristles are somewhat soft and I'm just using oil paint to draw with. It was helpful too having the mirror so close to the canvas and this mirror is like a full length mirror so it's just sitting on the floor and it's uh, leaning against the stand that's holding up my softbox light. I got the idea to put on the hat from looking back at the master self-portraits. It seemed that more often than not they all were wearing some kind of hat. Now, it seemed like my portrait was centered up pretty well on the canvas, but as you'll see, and when we get closer towards the end of the portrait, uh, it ended up, for whatever reason, shifting <laughs> to the left. I think maybe it had to do with the size of my hat and the hair and everything to the left on the picture plane. So it, if I had to do it over, maybe a larger canvas, a little wider would be good, or maybe a square canvas, but I needed more canvas to the left, I believe. Something that I'm continuously thinking about is the thinness of the areas in the shadow. I don't want my shadows to be too thick. I actually like a little bit of the toned canvas to show through in the shadow areas and I plan to really build up thick layers of opaque paint in the lights. I 
I considered the different colors of hats that I had and I do have a darker hat but I knew I wanted to do a sort of really dark dramatic type background that would really allow a lighter colored hat to stand out so this hat was kind of the same coloring as my hair and then I have the black shirt on which made sort of this vignetting of darkness around the portrait you'll see that coming up but I was considering all of that when I was selecting the hat and the color of the hat So I started painting this um, early in the morning and I have to my left on the upper left area the softbox light. Now to my right about three feet is a north facing window and there's pretty strong sunlight coming through there. So it's ending up that I have cool strong light from the softbox which is the strongest light source hitting me. And then the window light is coming through as warm because it's so much sunlight. So it's going to create this beautiful little warm edge on the right side of my cheek and jaw. And I'm uh, going to make sure that I capture that before <laughs> the light changes too much. And what did happen was later in the evening when I went back to paint, you know, the light had significantly changed on the right side of me but I just sort of ignored it and stuck with what I had seen earlier in the day with that warm sunlight. Now, um, you'll see towards the end of the portrait, but when I come back and start painting again, to, it was a two day portrait painting, the next day, the light was still a little different. So, uh, you know, you have to just expect those kinds of things when you have a window situation. But if you want it to be a little less, <laughs> of a struggle with the light, then it may be best to have one light source. So if you are near a window, if you're going to let the window be your light source, then you're going to have to deal with some of the changes that are going to come with that. Or you could just cover the window with a curtain and use a light, maybe like a softbox light or one single light source that you have and usually positioning them uh, just a little bit higher than your head and a little bit off at like a 45 degree angle from your face is the ideal setting to get the kind of Rembrandt lighting <laughs> that uh, works so well in portraits and, and makes things easier because it sets you up to be able to see the shadow shapes easier when you have one single light source. As I am finding my way through the facial features and just kind of working out things positionally, I'm just still using these neutral colors from the Apelles palette. I'm not really worried about matching anything too specifically. That will come later. Right now I'm just concerned with pretty much catching the value of an area and also getting the drawing correct. I also put on my palette some walnut oil gel. I only use for mediums walnut oil or walnut oil gel. I don't use anything else. And the reason that I have the walnut oil gel is that it stays put on my vertical palette and I don't have to worry about dipping into cups or anything like that. So it's just really convenient to have a gel. And I'm only using it because some of the brown color paints seemed a little bit stiff for my liking for this initial level. I want things to go on thinly and a little bit transparent and putting some of that walnut oil gel into my paint mixtures is going to thin them out a little bit and let some of that under painting ground show through in my shadow zones. If you wanted to, you could also start with a one color underpainting. 
you don't have to jump into mixing colors right out the gate like I've done here. If you're newer to painting faces and portraits, then maybe a one color underpainting will be easier. That way you're only managing the drawing and the values. While I am in this stage of the portrait painting, I know things are not correct. I expect that and I welcome it because it gives me a place to start. It gives me a place to have understanding of, you know, something to judge and, and compare it to the other features in the face and figure out where things are are off and figure out where things are working and you know it i think it's kind of fun this stage you know you're just sort of figuring it all out drawing and getting shapes down and it's part of the process i enjoy so you know i expect to make quite a few changes in this early stage I really wanted to show you how slow I paint. So in the first about 25 minutes of this video, it's real actual time. I haven't changed anything. You're watching the portrait unfold as it actually really did. And then about 25 minutes into the video here, I'm gonna go ahead and speed things up so we can uh, see it all unfold in one video. But it took probably total time about six hours give or take uh, to complete the portrait i am a slow painter and you know it's something that i've heard said a few times you know there's no awards for painting quickly only awards for painting well <laughs> so don't be alarmed if you're a slow painter that's perfectly fine just really you know it all that matters is that you're enjoying yourself and take your time there's definitely no rush Now, once the painting gets further along and I'm feeling like things are pretty well established, that's when I will start to look at it in the reverse with a, a hand mirror that I have. I'll also be taking a picture of it with my cell phone and turning it into a black and white image so I can really judge the values carefully. But at this stage, it's still a little too soon for me uh, to be looking at things that way right I know they're wrong so looking at it in a mirror or through a cell phone at this point isn't going to be really be helpful but it will be later on when things get more established maybe you're wondering about the Apelles palette what it is where to come from <laughs> it came from an ancient Greek painter from about 300 BC, Apelles. Um, he pretty much created this palette just from limited colors. It's much like the Zorn palette, but it's specific to these colors. Now, of course, he ground his own pigments and made his own paints, but as it stands today, these brands are considered to be pretty close to what Apelles used originally. Now, I did try different titanium white initially and comparing it to the, uh, which white is it? It is the Sennelier titanium white. For some reason it does work better than other titanium whites. I think I had Winsor Newton originally and I thought it would be the same. It's not. <laughs> so if you're like me and you think, oh, I already have titanium white. Once you try this Sennelier Titanium White, you'll be surprised and uh, you won't want to go back. <laughs> so it's worth a little bit of the extra money that the Sennelier brand charges. Now, 
using a limited palette is extremely helpful, especially to new painters who don't really understand the control that is required from having a palette loaded with lots of different colors. It's, you know, candy to the eye and it's always fun to have all those different colors, but it is a lot to deal with, especially if you still haven't quite figured out color harmonies and color mixtures and how to make colors work together, those kinds of things. And that comes with practice. So if you're somewhat new, I find using a limited palette to be helpful. I like this palette because it has the yellow and the red as your really warm and saturated colors. Now that Mars black is a cool black. So if you need to have something that looks like blue, maybe a blue eyes, you just mix some of that Mars black with a little of that titanium white and boom, you've got a beautiful bluish color. And if you need green, you just mix some of the Mars black with some of that old Holland yellow brown and you're gonna have some beautiful varietals of green and then you just mix the white to adjust the um, value of it. But I found I was able to mix all the colors that I could possibly need uh, for this portrait that I'm doing. <laughs> from the Apelli's palette. Now I've gotten to a point where there's just about the, all of the features placed and I'm coming down and getting the bottom chin area positioned. So now I have a good idea of where the head is going to be and then I can start working my way into some of the shadows that are cast below the chin. So since the light is hitting me from the top left, there's definitely a pretty strong shadow being cast under my chin onto my neck. So we're gonna get that in place. And then from there, you'll see that I'm gonna speed the video up and we'll continue uh, painting through. You're going to want to continue to check your measurements as you paint. Things can get away from you and shift around and you might not notice it if you're not looking for it. I planned to see things kind of get off skew a little bit. I knew it's gonna happen. I tend to make my noses too long and then sometimes with this tilt, I found that the eye on the left side of the picture plane ended up sitting a little bit too high, so I had to keep pushing that back down. My plan from this point is to get the hat color down and get some of the hair color down. Once that I have the sort of initial shape of the, those elements, then I can put the background in. I need to get that darker background in so that I can start to judge my values more clearly. It's hard to judge your values until you have established your darkest darks and your lightest lights. 
So once I get everything kind of planted, then I'm going to start working on my values a little more carefully. I'm keeping my hair really simple. I'm just massing it in pretty much in three different values. I'm looking for the light shapes and sections, I'm looking for the middle value sections and then some of the shadowed sections of the hair. But I wanna keep everything pretty well grouped with the lightest areas being definitely on the top left. And then if there's any pieces of hair catching the light on the lower edges, uh, maybe I'll put a little bit of that in as well, but pretty much three values and no specific little strands of hair. We don't want spaghetti hair. You may have noticed there was a significant change in the lighting uh, just about here. That is because, like I mentioned earlier, in the outside light, the window, it is now nighttime and I had to adjust the video a little bit to brighten it so that you could see what I was doing. But it'll switch back here in just a minute to the next day. So as this little weird lit section comes to an end, this also signifies the end of my first day painting. So that's where um, it will stop for day one and then you'll see the light change again. <laughs> and I'll let you know uh, just here in a second, we're gonna come up on the beginning of day two. Okay, new day, new lighting. <laughs> so let's go ahead and continue. When we get these darker uh, background colors laid in, then I can really start to think about the actual values and colors of the flesh that are going down. And I can see them more correctly with this darker background in place. It is not my goal to cover the background completely. I want some of that orange ground to show through the dark background areas. And it'll be a nice um, kind of breaking up of the darkness because down below me is on my chest, I'm wearing a black shirt. So it's gonna be a little more black and a little more solid down here at the bottom of the picture plane. And then the areas around it, it's going to be very airy because you'll see some of that orange ground coming through. In fact, I probably will end up wiping some of the background off a little bit.
Now that the background is established, I can start working the edges of the portrait into the wet paint. And that will help to create very soft edges where I want them to be soft. And then I can also have a few hard edges where things are highlighted or lit pretty brightly. I don't want anything too bright that's far away from the face. For instance, like at, at the lower parts of my hair, um, the light's hitting it pretty brightly. In fact, I ended up towards the end of the painting glazing over the bottom edges of the hair, especially on the bottom right side of the picture plane. Once it dried, it looked a little bit too light still for me and I glazed over it. So at the end of this video, there is a image of the final painting and you'll see that with all of its adjustments and completions. Yes, the bottom jaw and chin area are looking a little gray. They are very neutral. And if you remember the three zones of the face, we can't really see the top zone, the forehead, which is the yellow zone. Uh, but the middle zone of the face is the pink zone across the cheeks and the nose. And then the third zone, the lower part of the face, is typically a little more grayed or it could be mauve. It could be some greens down there because it's usually further away from the light source so it's not getting as much um, saturated color coming through. It's a little bit gray right now so I'm sure I'll be uh, warming that up a little bit but it does need to have its different temperature down on that lower third of the face. I'm putting in nice warm shadows under my neck and you'll see that it really helps to pump up the volume of the face when you get these shadows established in the neck area. It really makes the face feel like it's coming forward and has, you know, fullness. So I've been working on this self-portrait from the mirror <laughs> and so I put this hat on because I wanted to have my eyes in shadow a little bit so I didn't have to have too much detail on them because I wear glasses <laughs> I can't see very well what is going on when I'm painting unless I have the glasses on. So I didn't want to paint myself with the glasses on, mainly because I didn't like the shadow that was happening from the light situation I got here. So I've been putting them on to see like the lower part of my face and then taking them off to do my eyes. And the eyes are in shadow so I feel like, you know, keeping the contrast low in that area will give it the uh, look of being in shadow from the bill of the hat. But also, <laughs> it allows me to not have to put a lot of detail in the eyes because I can't see them. <laughs> That's, I guess one way around that would be to have a photograph of the pose and maybe zoom in to see the drawing of the eyes but this way I don't have to worry about it. So each time I get into position I try to match the head tilt which I wanted to have a little bit of an attitude going on so I've got kind of this head tilt to the right and also chin up situation going on. So I look for the distance in the forehead to where the hat is positioned and then also I'm looking for the distance from the tip of my nose to the edge of my face when I get back into position so I can see that everything's matching. So I have two light sources. So I have a north light coming in from over here on this right side. To the left of me, I have a softbox light up at a 45 degree angle. So I didn't have the north light window, 
then I would have had a Rembrandt sort of lighting situation, but I thought it was interesting to see the different light sources. So the north light window is cooler slightly than the light on the softbox. And I feel like mainly that has to do with the how far the window is for me and that the light box is a little closer. So I've been feeling pretty good about the drawing. I'm wondering if I need to bring this shadow on my chin up a little bit. So what I can do is I can take a paintbrush or I can take this proportion tool, which is easier for me. And I'm working life size pretty much, so I can go into position and compare it to the corner of my mouth to where the shadow starts. And I have my glasses on. <laughs> This is definitely slowing the process down. So actually, according to that measurement, that positioning of the shadow is correct. Okay, so then, I'm trying to see the color. of that area, get the hair in the same position. So when I was working on it yesterday, I felt like the neck was a little bit darker. I like it dark. What I am seeing though is this neck area here is a little darker and redder than what I have it. I'm gonna add some neutralized kind of red flush into this neck area. I could push the value a little darker right under here. Right under the chin. I think by doing that, I give a little more volume to the lower part of the face. I have to be careful not to push that lighter flesh tone up. cover it up with too much shadow. So I'm gonna bring it back down. And I'm pretty much working wet into wet. So I started the portrait yesterday. Today is day two and it is still wet. So working wet into wet. Which I like. I could be fine either way. This is direct painting when you're working wet into wet, but indirect painting, working on top of dry paint, I'm fine with that too. So I'm trying to see that my mouth is shaped correctly. I'm wondering if it's wide enough. I'm gonna check the width. Well, that's very much different. Let's see. I'll get just the main lip part. Yeah, so I feel like I've got to make that mouth a little wider. Now, here's the center line. It's pretty good on this side, so it needs more to the light side, the, this way. 
I'm looking at the nose to see how it compares. Placement-wise. Oh yeah, I think that's better. So now I can nudge this center line. The center line stops at the edge of my iris. So if I go to the edge of my iris and I come straight down, pretty much where we are. And I want to make sure I don't lose the attitude. <laughs> So difficult painting <laughs> yourself. You know, trying not to let any sort of vanity get in the way. <laughs> but, like, I'd love to have full lips, but I have a thin upper lip, especially, so I have to make sure I don't over exaggerate that. Or I could choose to do so, I suppose but maybe not for this one. Trying to be true. I think it's often helpful to go, to paint beyond the line you're aiming for and then shape it with the surrounding color. Sort of a push and pull, bringing some of that flesh into the lip, some of the lip into the muzzle flesh. So it gives us a nice soft edge. The other thing that's happening is the upper lips in shadow, so I'm trying to keep it a little darker than the bottom. But I also don't want it to look like I'm wearing lipstick. I have just a little chapstick kind of gloss stuff on. I have to remember to turn my head into position each time I look at the mouth. It's so strange to paint with my glasses off because I really don't see well. So I think, as far as a focal point, the mouth is pretty much it. But also the tilt of the head, which is giving that attitude that I'm looking for. I think it looks like me. <laughs> I see I see me a little bit there. I don't know though. You, know, you think you know what you look like, but do we really know what we look like? So if we go back to thinking about why do a self-portrait, you look at Rembrandt and 
people like Van Dyke, uh, other master painters, like, you know, they have all done self-portraits. It's a good way to practice and it's free. <laughs> so if you've never done a self-portrait from the mirror, I highly suggest it. It hasn't been as daunting as I was thinking it would be. This is my first one from a mirror. Well, it's my first one from a mirror in a long time. I have attempted it before, but it was early in my painting journey and I don't think I was ready for it. Not to say that there's a specific time when you should attempt it. There's not. You attempt it when you feel ready. I'm looking for some subtle shadow shifts here to really get the volume of that mouth. Like I said, it's the vocal point. It can have a bit more detail. And the other features. Let's thinking I want to darken that shadow under the bottom lip. Yeah. I sneak up on my darks. I like to build them up slowly. And one thing that I'm looking at, noticing that the center line of the lip, the darkness, the value of it, while the nostrils are dark, they're not as dark as the center line between the two lips. I get just a little more roundness right here. Elvis snarl. So we have this tilt of the head, so we've got the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose is three quarter view, but you can kind of see how that's working in that direction and then the tilt of the mouth. I think we're good. I don't want to do anything too black between those lips. how you sneak up on Valley. <laughs> Thank you. 
it's hitting the muzzle here pretty brightly of the top lip. I'm always trying to capture the mouth, the way this muzzle area turns in and turns into that center line there. Just a smidge <laughs> more lip out to the left. Remember, we said that corner of the mouth lines up with the edge of the iris, so. Pretty much there. Right. Corner of this mouth lines up with the pupil of the eye on the right. sure what's going on this is like the worst area for me right here the corner of the eye on the right by the tear duct I can't see really well what's going on there but I am trying to just let it be value. I'm not looking for detail, but I'm asking myself how much value do I see going in there? It's like I have to look at it for a bit, think about what is it I see, make sure my head's in the right position, tilt and angle. And I feel like it just is dark enough to where it kind of just goes back into this corner of the nose without any real detail. So, and then I can't really see the shape of my nose because the glasses are in the way. I have a little bit of the shadow goes over the nose. It comes down to the middle of the eye, so I gotta bring it down onto the top of the nose more. And then across here. So you can see the shadow line starting right here. So it kind of comes down and makes that reverse shape of the hat bill. So it's pretty dark in the orbital eye area. And dark on the glabella. That area between our eyebrows is the glabella. <laughs> I'm not super concerned with the color temperature. I'm just looking for the correct value. I can always nudge the temperature when I have my glasses on. I got a little bit of a shadow coming here under the eye. It's a little thicker 
than that. Now following the shape of the nose. Looking at how far the shadow comes down on the nose. Let's look about right here. Now I'm looking at the eye on the right to see how it compares. And it's just about to the bottom of the iris. Like so. Now, when I put my glasses back on, I'll reevaluate that the paint handling of the shadow I just put in. I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. The main thing is to not have a high degree of contrast in that area because it's in shadow and that's one way to manage that is to keep the contrast low. All I can really see are the shadow shapes and a little bit of the feature placement. I can see the eyebrow pretty good. I feel like it could go up a little. And there's some of that north light coming in and hitting the eyelid. I think it's darker as it comes towards the nose. glasses on. Oh yeah, got this sort of ski jump thing happening. Maybe if I had different shaped glasses I could see better. I think I just need to revisit that shot. I'm not thrilled with the brush work because I couldn't see. <laughs> I keep wanting to look. Just have to go with what looks good in my eye. I'm adding some warmth into that shadow area. I feel like the turn is a little higher up. And then that nose comes up here. darken it. Hmm. Oi.
So I guess at some point, you know, if you have good drawing skills, you can just let those take over. So I think it's pretty close to being done. And you know, I had that initial underpainting which was kind of orangey. So I'm letting some of that do the work in the cheek and nose area, which is the middle zone of the face, which is also known as the pink or red zone. And then you can see how things get a little grayer or cooler as you come down on the lower part of the face, which is further away from the light source. Got a little more transitional warmth right there on the bottom of this wing of the nostril. I always feel like you can't have too much warmth in the nose. Kind of like the ears. So as with most portraits, you want to look at the eyes first, but I was trying to create more contrast in the area of the mouth. A little bit of contrast on this outer edge because some of the light was just catching the corner of this eye on the left. But for the most part, I feel like that's pretty good. You know, a painting will be done when, you know, you can sit and look at it and you can't see anything else to fix. <laughs> what I did like about it was trying to balance the dark masses. So I have this dark shape here and I feel like that's being balanced by this dark shape over here on the left beside the chin and um, jaw. And then this dark shape down here, I feel like is being balanced by this shadow shape up here. And then I'm also looking at how the light, so the strongest light's coming from the top left. It's hitting the hat, the edge of the hat, the edge of the cheek and eye. It's touching the nose, a little bit of the mouth, and then it's hitting these bits of hair that are coming forward. So I feel like there's this nice directional light pattern and you know everything's just sort of accented over here slightly, but I wonder if I should tone down this area right here just a little bit. I want these highlights, but I want them to be slightly darker than the highlights in this stronger light. I think that's gonna do it. like the neck's got nice shadow, non significant hard, hard edges. I am wearing a black shirt. I'm just leaving that kind of nondescript, letting that melt into the background. This way, the whole shape of the head, the light values of the head are the predominant uh, values. And then you have this sort of dark vignetting around the head, which makes everybody just take notice of the head. 
had some buttons on the hat back here. I didn't make those too detailed. I left them kind of vague and low in contrast so they would just fade into the background because it's off in this outer edge area. Now, one thing that could add some interest is when the background dries, could try sanding some of it. Yeah, it's still pretty wet. Could try sanding to get some interesting texture in the background, but it's just sort of a practice situation, so I'm not super concerned with that. I like being able to see some of that orange coming through that dark background. If this was a white background, it wouldn't have been as interesting, but because it's that warm from the orange, it's nice with the, ba with the background. You know, so I, I told you in the beginning, I'm using the Apelles palette. So I have um, the, these are brand specific too. So it's the Sennelier Titanium White. And then, Old Holland, oops, yellow brown, and the Sennelier Chinese Vermilion, which is my red. And then I have the Old Holland Mars Black, which this stands in, it's a cool black, and this stands in for any blues, especially if you mix it with a touch of that Sennelier Titanium White, it'll give you a beautiful blue color, especially depending on what it's next to, because as you know, colors are subjective and dependent upon what's around them. But I am going to, I'm gonna call it done. If I do anything else, it wouldn't be significantly noticeable. It'd be such a tiny detail that I don't, I don't see the point in continuing. I feel like it's as good of a likeness as I can get from a mirror. <laughs> All right, so that was fun. I'm glad I did that, and I should probably do more of that, but I think the next portrait demo I do will be a portrait from life, but of a model. So I can compare maybe the experience and the level of detail that I can get from working with the model. All right, so that is it, portrait painting from a mirror self-portrait using the Apelles palette.